Hello, Miss Reines. Don't look at me all confused. I can switch things up. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're doing great. Today is another day that we're in the kitchen because I realized that I may have uploaded a couple of shorts on YouTube, but I don't really go on there. I never look at shorts and I'm wondering if you guys do. And at the same time, I also wondered what, what is, on, is YouTube on YouTube shorts? shorts. Really, I thought it's probably just recycled content from other platforms, right? That's the only content that I uploaded on YouTube shorts so far. In some cases, there's no real way of knowing. So I scrolled through there and I had a couple of recipes pop up and I was like, <gasps> I've never checked out the recipes on YouTube Shorts. Now, I'm here to judge them. And without further ado, we're gonna start with the first one. It's not really breakfast time, but we're gonna make breakfast. Or at least we're gonna make what this short is calling breakfast. And more specifically, this dietitian calls her breakfast. And that is usually something that I would have for lunch anyway, and it's lunchtime, so. Technically, it's not even the dietitian's shorts. It's just another person, mm, Remixing, I think it's called on YouTube short. The dietitian's content and basically making the same thing, which I guess is what I'm doing as well. I'm a dietitian and this is what I ate for breakfast. I'm a dietitian's biggest enemy and I'm gonna try out this breakfast. We're gonna make a rice paper omelet. That looks so easy and that's all I really need in life. So here's what you need for your rice paper omelet. Obviously, rice paper and an egg because we're making rice paper omelet. <laughs> some scallion or spring onion. Some kewpie mayo. I bought the knockoff version. Don't tell anyone. Some sriracha. I'm really glad I made this a couple of weeks weeks ago in a recipe, some chili oil. <laughs> and that's it already. Let's go over there. We need a hot pan. I feel like that's gonna be just spicy for me. This really is so quick and easy. I hope this is good. Add the rice paper to your hot pan. Put some chili oil. Wow, ah, it's hot. <laughs> Add your egg. Mix it. My egg is too big for this. Also, how do I mix this? Oh no, this is terrible. How do I keep it inside? <laughs> it's fine. Then just add your scallion. That's gonna be too spicy for me. The mayo. Oh my God. <laughs> Maybe I should have taken Cupy mayo. But honestly, I need something to conceal how spicy it'll be, so that's fine. And just your sriracha. Ta-da! Now I guess wait for your omelette to cook. Oh, is it cooked already? Fold it in half and that's it. I guess that was a hole. Hers was crunchy. Mine isn't crunchy yet. Should I leave it in there? I'm gonna leave it in there a little while. Okay guys, what can I say? I just really hope that this is good. Mine isn't crunchy. I can already tell. I think I'm gonna put it back. I really want it to be crunchy. I put it on high heat now. We'll see about that one. This is how I warm my voice. See? Yeah. This is how I Shut up your voice. What? It is crunchier now. It could also be potentially burnt. It's obviously gotten a little darker. It's like not crunchy, but it's crunchier than before. How was her so crunchy? I'm a dietitian and this is what I ate for breakfast. <laughs> that is zero crunch, but hopefully 100% yum. Maybe it has to cool down to set. Also, why didn't we put any like salt or so in there? That's really nice. Mmm. Honestly, guys, if I was into savory breakfast, I'd have this for breakfast every day too. I'd probably experiment a little bit with like spices and seasoning in general. Maybe I'd even add a bit of a bell pepper or some sweet corn or so as well. This is really nice. I like this. I'd make this every day for my kids in the morning. The kids that I don't have. A little bit more seasoning and this is perfect. I just wish it was crunchy. I want another one. I'll probably have that for dinner later as well. <laughs> Does she really only have one of those? Because like, I'm hungry. Yeah. Recipe number one was a success. Let's move on with recipe number two and hope that it's also a success. Although I am quite skeptical. Yeah. 
We're gonna make, uh, what's it called? Vegan gluten-free lemon bars. Yes. Uh, ours are just not gonna be gluten-free. <laughs> We're gonna make a lemon curd for this. A lemon curd is usually made with egg, so I'm excited to see how this one is gonna hold up to the non-vegan version. Obviously, I was sold on this one as soon as I heard and saw lemon. <laughs> as we all know. And without further ado, I think we should uh, give this one a go. These bars yeah. consist of a crust and the lemon curd, and we're gonna start with a crust. Start by preheating your oven to 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. Here's what you need for it. As always, I'm gonna make half the recipe. 90 grams of all-purpose flour. You can use gluten-free flour if you need to. And then I also already put a pinch of salt into this. 25 grams of cane sugar and 56 grams of softened vegan butter. To a mixing bowl, add just the butter, that looks like vanilla ice cream, and the sugar. Mix it for about one minute until it's light and fluffy. I don't know, it looks fantastic. <laughs> now add the flour and the salt. That's not a lot of crust, but the crust has been crusted. Add your crust. <laughs> that looks like this vegan soy meat stuff. Spread it evenly. Turns out this is a good size pan because otherwise I wouldn't have enough. Wow, this is so satisfying to spread right now. Now we bake this for 20 to 24 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. Cut. Wait, no, and go. <laughs> Our crust has been in there for 22 minutes, I think. Looks good, the edges got a little darker, but I think it's fine. And now once it's cooling, we can start making the curd. And not the curd from Gilmore Girls. <laughs> curd. You know what I learned at uni? A common, not mistake, but like struggle. <laughs> for German English learners that sort of stops them from sounding more natural in English is that they we don't really distinguish between what well, they're called voiced and voiceless sounds or even plosives in English because we don't really distinguish between them in German but in English they do. Kurt and curd is an example. The voiceless plosive is the t and the voiced plosive is the D. That's just an advice, something to look into if you want to sound more natural, not that I sound supernatural, but supernatural. You get it. Anyways, we're gonna make the curd. Here's what you need. 125 grams of cane sugar, 120 milliliters of cashew milk. They didn't have cashew milk and I wasn't gonna make cashew milk myself. This is just oat milk. I hope it's fine. 80 milliliters of lemon juice and about one and a half teaspoon of lemon zest. This is probably more, but you guys know that I always look for more lemon in lemon recipes. 18.5 grams of cornstarch. I guess the cornstarch is what replaces the egg because obviously the curd becomes thick or thicker because of the egg. For some reason, you need a little bit of ground turmeric. If you make half the recipe, it says to use 0 0.06 tablespoons of ground turmeric, however much that is. A pinch of salt, and lastly, 28 grams of vegan butter. To a medium saucepan, we're making half the recipe, so I think a small one is enough. We're gonna add everything except for the vegan butter. I don't know, in the recipe it is in capital letters. Do not add the vegan butter yet. So I just also wanted to emphasize it. Do not add the vegan butter yet. How much turmeric do I add now? Like this? Okay, I think that's enough. We're obviously gonna mix it all together. I think we just put the turmeric in there for the color. Next, we're gonna heat the mixture over medium heat, stirring constantly until the mixture begins to boil. <gasps> I totally forgot it said stirring constantly. Which takes about four to seven minutes. And once the mixture begins to boil, we're gonna remove the curd from the heat and whisk in the vegan butter one tablespoon at a time until it's completely melted and the mixture is glossy. That was easy. Because as a last step, we're just gonna pour the curd over our slightly cooled crust now and wait for it to set. Wowie, it has become yellow. Let me try this. <laughs> mm. So far, this tastes better than the normal lemon curd that I've made. Name mas. This goes into the fridge now for at least three hours. See you later. This looks set. It looks wobbly bobbledy, if you know what I mean. Look, it looks wobbledy bobbledy. <laughs> Yay! Maybe it's not super set yet, but it's set enough. Now we can just cut them into bars. 
As we can see, the crust is kind of crumbly, but my saliva is not crumbly right now. That looks really good. That smells even better. Actually, it doesn't look that good. Now it looks good until it dissolves in a split second. One thing I've noticed is that I can't really pick it up because my crust creeps crumbling and dying. That is not really nice. Cheers though. Oh. Yum. Good thing I added more lemon because this is the perfect amount of lemon. This is so good. I mean, yes, the crust is very crumbly, but the crust tastes good though. I don't even really have words, you guys. I could devour this entire thing. Not to just defend my impatience, but I kind of like the texture of the lemon curd. I like that it's slightly runny still and not super set. Guys, these are amazing. If you're into lemon, you should make them. If you're not into lemon, you should still make them because they're good. <laughs> Moving on from happiness to hopefully more happiness. Are we ready for recipe number three? <laughs> I'm actually really excited for recipe number three, but I have a feeling it's gonna be too sweet for me. But that is also part of it. And I think going into it, knowing that it'll be very sweet makes it better in the end because that is part of the experience. Maybe this time I will like this experience. I was immediately hooked because that person was so sweet. She seemed so nice and lovely and sweet and I just want to trust her with my life. Stop throwing out orange peels because you can turn them into the most delicious snack. This recipe is from my mom. We weren't rich, but she will surprise us with all these creative treats. She got me. Anything citrus fruit, come in. Also, you can make it with any citrus fruit. She used six large lemons. We're gonna use four small ones. Basically, we're just gonna eat the orange peel. And for today, you're only gonna need the oranges and some water. We're gonna start by somehow hopefully juicing these oranges and get 60 milliliters of freshly pressed orange juice out of this. I think I'm gonna sharpen my knife. Oh, for me that death is death. We're only gonna need the juice tomorrow. Will it still be freshly pressed? Peel, peel, peel. Mm. Whoa! That's, That's the, the yummiest, yummiest orange, orange I've ever, I've ever eaten. eaten. Wow! Acting like I've never had a fresh orange in my life. <laughs> Now we're gonna remove the white layer, but incompletely. We're gonna leave a little bit of the plith for texture purposes later, apparently. I think the white layer is bitter and we obviously don't want bitter, 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 bitter bitches. That's a good amount, I think. Well, that definitely is not on the list of top most fun things I've ever done. But as long as we get a great snack out of it, I'm down for the struggle. Now we're just gonna boil the peel for 10 minutes. So there's one last thing we can do today. Once they've been boiling for an hour, an hour? <laughs> so once it, they've been boiling for 10 minutes, you're gonna take them off the heat, put water into a new bowl, and just put your peel into that water. It smells so good in here. Aw, sorry I forgot to turn it off. And in this water, they're gonna have to soak overnight to get rid of the bitter taste, apparently. It sucks because I want to eat it now, but it's also great because you're gonna see me again tomorrow. Bye! It is the next day, hello. It's me, myself, and also I. Our oranges, our orange peels have been sitting in this bowl for about 24 hours now, I guess. We can just start by rinsing them. Getting rid of the water. All that you need is 200 grams of sugar for half of the recipe. The 60 milliliters, I think it was, or 80 of orange juice and optionally some vanilla extract. In the end, more sugar to coat everything. That's Go over there. We add our peel to a pan, put it on medium-low heat, and add the sugar, the orange juice, and again, optionally, some vanilla. Now we stir and let it simmer for about 25 minutes until the syrup thickens.
so it's been about half an hour probably and I think it's thick enough now. She only said until the syrup thickens and it's become way thicker now and she also said it only takes about 25 minutes and it's been way over 25 minutes now and so yeah and I guess I also have orange syrup now because what else am I gonna do with that and as almost the last step we are just gonna let our peel dry on a rack. Now we let this cool and rest for about an hour. So it was sunny when we started this and now there's literally storm. It's been over an hour. They don't feel super dry yet, but maybe they're never not sticky. This is what they look like now. Obviously you can eat them like this, I guess, and they're gonna be sweet, but, but in the short, and we're gonna follow that short, she actually covers them in even more sugar. <laughs> now what was that thought process, Vincent? And there you have it guys, our orange peel. They smell really intense and very, very nice. I'm really excited about them. Gonna try the most perfect one. Mmm, that's so orangey. I mean, mmm. I don't know. <laughs> I low-key expected this to be better because it kind of tastes like a peel. And if you've ever eaten an orange or any kind of citrus fruit and accidentally ate some of the peel, you know what it tastes like? And it kind of tastes wrong. At least I tricked my mind into thinking that it's wrong to eat it. I don't know. And so it kind of feels like I'm eating something that I shouldn't be eating. It's not bad, but I also can eat more than two of them. Not because they're too sweet. They're actually not super sweet. I expected them to be way sweeter, but just because of that feeling that I just, I guess, can shake off, it feels wrong to eat them. They're still quite bitter. I was so excited about them, but I really, really love the syrup. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the syrup, but it tastes really, really great. And so at least I've gotten that out of it. <laughs> what do I do with orange syrup? I'm not gonna drink it with my coffee. I don't know, give me your ideas what I could do with orange syrup. And tell me if you guys ever tried to make something like it. Maybe I've done something wrong. Anyway, back to our regular scheduled program and good night. I'm out of here, guys. I have an amazing day ahead. By that, I mean, just gonna FaceTime a friend. <laughs> I think I'm gonna read a book because I'm finally hooked on a book again that I can't really talk about because I bought it before I found out that the author and also what the author was inspired by was really problematic, but like I had bought it before I found out and so now obviously I'm still gonna read it and it's actually really good, which makes it worse because I don't wanna talk about it. You do with that information what you want. I'm gonna read that book now <laughs> and be problematic, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, let me know if you're gonna try one of these recipes and if not then I'll see you next week with potentially more recipes. That's how this goes on this channel nowadays. But either way, thank you so much for watching this video and then we'll see each other la próxima vez. <laughs> Bye!